Dropping gems from Keisha Christian. She's on a mission, sharing information, knowledge for soul, body and mind. Dropping gems, KeishaGems.com. KeishaGems.com. Welcome to Just Dropping Gems, proud partner of Rude Rangers Entertainment. We can now be found on Roku and on the Rude Rangers app. Be sure to download the app on your iOS or Android devices. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Just Dropping Gems podcast. On today's episode, I have quite an interesting guest. Her name is Julie Caraccio. She is an award-winning professional life and end-of-life organizer and certified life coach. She hosts the popular self-help podcast, Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, and is the author of 10 books, including The Got Clutter, 365 Journal Prompt Series. Julie, Thank you so much for coming on Just Dropping Gems podcast. Excited to have you. Excited to hear all about your story and what exactly is it, it is that you do in your business. I'm excited to be here and thanks for having a podcast and sharing good with the world. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Well, we'll get right to it. Um, what exactly is a life and end of life organizer? So I take a very holistic view when it comes to professional organizing. So a lot of times when people think about organizing and clutter, they think of the physical stuff, right? It's like, what do we have? Do we have too much junk? How can we get it organized? But I look at your complete life. So that might mean your mental clutter. If you have clutter in your relationships, emotional, spiritual clutter, all of it. My definition of clutter is this. Clutter is anything that prevents you from creating the life you choose, deserve, and desire. And I'm not a fan of organizing clutter, so I'm a big believer in clearing your clutter, and then you can get organized. And I also organize for end of life and help with that because in our culture, a lot of times, we don't accept death in America. It's something we're afraid of. It's something that we've been made to think of as bad when it's a natural part of life. In order to live your life fully, you need to accept that death is coming. And so I help with end of life such as, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? Do you have your living will put together? The last thing you want is when you've gone on to the next great adventure is to have your loved ones concerned about, where do I find that? Did they want their social media account closed? And to give them peace of mind and allow them to grieve. Oh, I like that. So um, do you actually um, create like a checklist or for your clients? Um, I know you have a book, Got Clutter. I don't know if you mentioned this in your book, but how exactly do you go about, because this is just coming to mind, like some sort of um, cheat sheet or a checklist you would use for um, a client? Yes. And so depending on what they wanted to work on, and it's the next big book I'm working on that I'm hoping to get published next year, which will include all the end of life stuff as well as some life coaching oh okay and i i like the fact that um you're doing something like this especially um when we we don't um sometimes we don't plan um for those who you know might be passing on and you could be young or whatever absolutely and it's good to um prepare for things like this I'm going to share with you two cases that people probably, most of your listeners probably know who Aretha Franklin is. It's my understanding Aretha didn't have a will, and then she had, and it's not settled, and she had a relative, and I don't remember who exactly, who claimed that they found a will stuffed in between the cushions of the couch. So then you've got all this fighting, and also if you don't leave a will, then the state can come in and, 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 take care of it, and they're going to charge you for that. And I don't know about you, but I don't want the state. They already get enough for me. I want it to go. I know they charge for that. Yeah, so I can't tell you that things different from state to state, and I think it's called an interstate. I'm not an attorney. I just help get the organization going. But I save you money because if you have everything organized and go to the attorney, you're not going to have to pay 
hundreds and thousands of dollars to have them do that. But so that, and I don't remember where she is in the process. I think it might have finally got settled, but Prince didn't leave a will. I was just and, about to mention him too. Right. So here's another example. This fantastic musician who I'm sure had a lot of money and assets and you know, there might have been causes that he was really passionate about that he would have liked to have given to, but that's whatever he wanted is not going to happen now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is so important, getting yourself, getting your whole life organized. Mm -hmm. um, and as we know, death is a part of life. So as far as you being a life organizer, how do you work with your clients in that aspect? Well, everything's individualized. One of the things that I find frustrating in my job is people like, oh, but this popular person did it. And it's like, well, that worked for them. It might not work for you. So we've got to look at your lifestyle. How, what makes sense to you? What systems can we use? And again, bringing back that holistic aspect. So for example, when I'm working with a client, even just organizing, there's going to be coaching going on. So one of your assignments might be, to find a mindfulness practice, right? Because when we clear our clutter, because whatever's going on the inside is reflected on the outside and vice versa. Or maybe it might be you have to say no to three things you don't want to do, right? About putting that boundary. Because have you ever done something you didn't want to and then you're kicking yourself and you're angry and you're frustrated mm -hmm. and then you've created all this clutter for yourself and that can manifest by, you know, throwing all your papers in the air or not wanting to clean your stuff up. So it's really looking at everything that's going on in your life. Yes, it's so important to do that. Really, because um, actually when you um, clear out the clutter, um, I'm even thinking on like, um, if we're thinking, because you're thinking holistically, what I'm thinking not even on a physical level, but on a metaphysical level, mm -hmm. when you clear out the clutter, um, actually that's when you receive your messages or you um, are more clear about what are the things you have to do. You actually have, um, I'll say it like this, you have mental clarity. So um, the fact that you're doing this type of work is really great because you're helping people um, get a focus on their life. I'm so happy you mentioned that because not everyone believes in energetic clutter. And so remember, whether you believe this from a physics perspective or a more spiritual or metaphysical perspective, everything's energy. And so it's it, your energy can get stuck, right? If you have a lot of anger that you haven't dealt with or a lot of sadness or a lot of grief, it gets stuck. And remember, just emotions are energy wanting to move. That's all they are. They're nothing to be afraid of. They're nothing to judge. But then when they get stuck, it sometimes, you know, they seem to come out at the most inopportune times if we don't deal with them, if we don't clear them and keep that space open. Remember, if you have a lot of clutter in your life, you can't invite new things into your life. You can't invite what you'd like to create. Yeah, so true. I actually did. I have a segment called Life Gems. And in one mm -hmm. of my segments, I actually, it's called um, Sacred Space. And one of the things I actually um, talked about um, in order to um, invite um, abundance into your life, you need to clear your space. Mm -hmm. So it's so important that um, people realize that I didn't really focus on too much of the cleaning part. I'm more focused on the type of product to use when cleaning your space. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm, I, um, I'm thinking about this, um, when you are clearing your space and i and, and me i like to take things from a spiritual aspect as well as physical but physically or i should say spiritually cleaning your um your mm -hmm. space you um actually invite um different energy or you could even invite and attract abundance to you oh absolutely can because remember like you should i suggest if your face space ever feels yucky, clean it. But I suggest you clean it on a regular basis. Like if we have people over, it's getting saged afterwards. I mean, I doesn't I can love them dearly, but we all have got our stuff going on. And you know, we can get stagnant energy. Like especially remember when you're doing some space clearing, get in those corners. Don't forget underneath the bed. Don't forget the attic. Don't forget in the closet. All those little places because energy can get stuck there. Mm -hmm. Very, very much true. And even like one thing too, when um, I stage or a Palo Santo or whatever my, I do in my space, I open up windows as well to, mm. let, to let that, um, that stagnant energy out. Yes, I think that's important. Then what I like to do and suggest to people is once you've cleared that energy, 
take some time to set the intention. What do you want to bring into your space? Like, for instance, I'm sitting here talking to you in my office. So, so I know some of my office intentions are abundance, to bring in income, you know, to take care of our cats and the life that they've been accustomed to. <laughs> I, I want to be creative. I want to have my highest wisdom so that that's able to come through when I work with my clients. Mm, yes, very much so. That's important to set your intention. And mm -hmm. I, I like that, especially, um, I, I know this is a little off topic, but get a, get, when you get up in the morning, you set your intention. So I'm even thinking like, um, cause since this is your thing, organization, um, making up your bed in the morning, like when you're making up your bed, mm -hmm. that's a good time to set your intention and what you want yes. to track to yourself during the day. It's a great yeah. suggestion. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. It seems like something you would suggest. <laughs> well, you know what? I truly believe when I'm interviewing people, like there's this symbiotic, like there's connection going on. And so all the ideas that are meant to be heard on this episode mm -hmm. are coming through. Ah, I see. <laughs> because what I do is I set the intention before an interview. Okay, let whatever I need to share be shared. I will trust how the conversation goes. I will trust that I share what's needed. Yes, exactly. I like that, Julie. Mm -hmm. so Good. Tell us a little about your books. I understand that you have written 10 books. Wow. It was, I just want to say for all of those creators out there, keep going. I had started the main book about four years ago and then had stops and starts, but I just kept with it. So I have a book that's a really do it yourself. It talks about cluttering, clearing clutter physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and there's a bonus energetic chapter. And so that really goes into the nitty gritty and gives you step by step, teaches you how to set goals, teaches you how to break stuff down. And along with that, I have a companion workbook. So as you're going through and I'm asking questions and doing exercises, you can share your thoughts there. And the other eight books are journal prompt books. I love journal prompt books. And I did something a little bit differently. And I haven't seen this in another journal prompt, but I did these for physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and holidays, because holidays can be really challenging for a lot of people. And then I have three volumes that do a little to, to focus on physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, if you want to get started in different areas. But what I've done is when people have clutter, they're overwhelmed. It's very hard for them. And so on my book, you'll see there's like a little lotus on the side next to the question. And so you can write out your answer. And then what I suggest you do is you go back and comb through and say, what was most important as I'm reading this? What is really the answer? What's the juice? What's the meat of the answer? And so you take that extra step. So you really have focused in on what's the answer I need to hear now. And then, then that can help you, support you in creating your goals and to move forward and make change in your life. Nice. And I have to tell you, um, my listening audience, those of you um, want information on Julie, definitely all this information will be in the show notes. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, um, definitely it will be in the description box below. So you could um, check out all that information. So, Thank Julie, you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so Julie, um, as far as being a certified life coach, what are some other areas that you um, help your clients with? It's really if they're struggling in their career, because again, I think everything's related. Like if you can't, as a business owner, I can't separate my professional life from my personal life. If I'm cluttered in my life, it's going to affect my business in some way. If I'm stressed in my business, it's going to affect my personal life. So it's really whatever someone is struggling with. I call it life coaching. I did a really intense program with someone. I mean, and we'd spend hours working on clearing out my own clutter. Because again, like when I work with someone, they have the wisdom within. I can't tell you what's best for you, Keisha. You know what's best for you. My job is to support you and bring out those answers, to bring out your own innate wisdom. And so it's wherever people are struggling. You know, I think it's very important that people find a good match. Who do I feel good around? Who do I feel gets me? Who do I feel I'm vibing with? I think all of those things are really important when looking with, for someone to work with. Mm, that's so true. 
because I'm a coach as well, and that's one of the things that you do. You're you're not giving the person the answer. You're letting them come to their mm-hmm. own conclusion. Exactly. So that's what a, a good coach does. Um, yes. And, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say yes, and I think that that's a good point for people to be aware because I've definitely worked with people who are like, I, I know what's best for you. I am the guru on top of the mountain. I am wise. <laughs> And it's like, okay, no. But when I was younger, I would have been like, yes, of course. Until I built up my confidence and knew, no, I know what's best for me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And you're helping um, others come to that conclusion as well. Mm-hmm. Learning that they need to trust themselves and trust mm-hmm. their instincts. Because yes. a lot of times we are looking outside for the answers. Mm-hmm. And we don't realize all the answers that we have are within us. Yes. And sometimes we just need to get the right person to um, actually um, help us to discover what those answers are. Yes. So once you get the right coach, the right teacher, you're on your way. 100%. Yes. So um, I also wanted to um, ask you about any collaborations that you possibly do? Because I, I don't know, for some reason, I see you working with other people. So is that something that you do as well? Other oh, yeah. professional? I have. I've, I've collaborated with people on presentations mm-hmm. and doing workshops because I think that's something really important. I'm definitely always open to book collaborations. I think two heads are better than one. I just started this year with a woman I met at the end of last year and we're doing a mastermind and right now it's the two of us and we're like you know what if we have the right person pop in we're open to that because it was very important to us kind of like with the coaching you want a really good fit you're going to be talking about stuff and she's a writer like i am and is in the process of getting a book out and so we talk about business and writing so it's been a really good fit and i think a really important collaboration because we're sharing knowledge and share and say hey have you tried this because I'm bringing a different perspective. She's bringing a different perspective. So I think collaborations are are definitely important. And I consider something like this, doing an interview, a collaboration. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is a a collaboration as well, because um, even as I am, um, we're having this conversation, I too, I'm learning about what you do. And the audience is learning about what you do as well. And, you know, we're all here to help each other, Mm -hmm. to help um, enhance each other's lives, which I think is is really amazing um, what you're doing. That's really cool. So you mentioned that you do workshops. What are um, some of the things you actually do in the workshops? I'm sure you're teaching people how to do um, life and end of life organizing, but um, what um, what are some tips that you um you actually share with people that attend your um workshop what tips that i would share on in a workshop am i understanding correctly yes okay so well so i do workshops i do online workshops on a variety of and i've also created classes around it so i have one around the holidays i have one at the beginning of the year get organized i have one on spring cleaning i have a back to school one so depending on what the actual presentation is some tips would be you have to understand and respect your lifestyle like here's something very minute but you know how on your phone you can organize your contacts Mm -hmm. I organize mine by first name most Mm -hmm. people don't they organize them by last name and but I have to do what's best for me whatever way my brain is wired doing that way makes the most sense to me so it's really important you know because I hear people say, well, this is the latest and greatest. And it's like, yeah, but it doesn't work for everyone. Another thing that I think is really important, I'm a huge fan of routines. From an organizational perspective, routines, they've done studies, routines help you get things done more quickly. And if you're kind of in that groove, then it just gets it done. Like, I believe you should have a morning routine. I believe you should have an evening routine. And I believe that you should have a weekend routine. Again, just, you know, and that doesn't mean you never have to switch it up. But if you're doing things like you mentioned, making the bed and setting your intention, if you get in the routine of doing that, you're going to ensure that you do it. Having gratitude, I think, is a very important daily intention, a very important routine to have. And then as we've talked, just remember everything is related. So 
Don't just look at the physical clutter. What's my mental clutter? Am I stuck in the past? Am I worried about something in the future? Do I have insomnia? What's going on? You know, am I able to express my emotions or do I stuff them down? You know, we're, we're seeing a lot of fighting and the country's in a really divisive place right now. And my response is what needs to be healed in me? Like if someone annoys me, like the other day I said something completely from a place of neutrality and they were like, you don't understand the law of attraction. I'm like, and I said, okay. I just walked away and they kept coming at me. Like wanting to fight, I'm like, I'm not going to engage. The fight is within. The fight has nothing to do with me. I am not going to lose my peace of mind to try to win in something I don't even see as an argument. So it's really important to keep that in mind. Mm. So really being mindful, practicing, mm -hmm. that's part of practicing mindfulness. Yes. And seeing how um, sometimes we are a reflection of each other. And uh, what I mean by that is like, not to say that that person, um, you were um, reflecting yourself in that person, but the person might have seen something in you that they might not have liked about themselves. That uh -huh. Oh, uh, it absolutely does. And the people that annoy us the most can be our greatest teacher. Yes. <laughs> Yes, truly, most definitely, <laughs> most definitely. So I could imagine in your line of um, your line of business, you probably one of the things that you probably would um, teach someone to do is um, get rid of the clutter of um, toxic people in their lives. Most definitely, that's something that's really important because you know they've done studies. Whoever you hang out with you become. So if you're mm -hmm. hanging out with a bunch of overweight people, you're going to become fat. If you're hanging out with people that are complaining all the time, you're going to start complaining. So it's really important. And you know, I've talked about, I have had friendships that I let go by. See, uh, I don't care if it's been 25 years, it's not healthy. And again, it doesn't have to be this big production. One of the things I've, I've done with my business, and I don't know if you've done this, is I have set well, I've set intentions, but I've let clients go. It's not good or bad. There's no judgment. You're on your path. It's all good. But, you know, I had a longtime client that was for a writing project that I did. And every time that I talked to this client, I was drained. I was exhausted mentally, physically. And I was like, it's not worth the money. I just, I, I just, don't, I'm done. And so I just said, you know what? I, I think I've taken you where I can. I think you need someone for the next level and walked away. Because I didn't want to deal with that because it was affecting my personal life. I'm stressed out every time I have to deal with this person. That's not what life's about. Mm, so true. Kind of like um, my past career as a classroom teacher. <laughs> when I think about it, that was, um, it wasn't even the children. It was administration that was mm -hmm. so toxic. And I would say it's, it's, it's everything overall. It's not even that, that administration. It was just the whole system. Mm -hmm. together because you know if you think about the energy and I'm an empath so I am mm. very sensitive and I was picking up on that and that really affected my health so definitely even if I mean like this might not everyone might not be able to do this but even if you have to resign from a job you know that's I, toxic I think you made the right decision no matter what and I was in a really toxic situation before I quit my job and what I decided was I was like I'm gonna take a go of it and we'll see how it works and worst case if I have to get another job but I used to joke that you could walk into my office and if I'd bring a crystal bowl it would explode because the energy there was so negative and even if people didn't believe in this it, you know they at a subconscious level were experiencing it and probably say yeah there's just something off I don't know if I could describe it and if people are kind of trying to say, well, hmm, how does Keisha pick up on stuff? Or I'm trying to understand it. Think about the expression, the tension was so thick you could cut the air with the knife, right? Mm -hmm. Because most people probably have that. And you say, oh, yeah, like if you walk into a room after an argument or something, I'll be like, oh, yeah, you feel that energy. Most of us have felt that, even if we can't quite express it. Yeah, definitely. Like um, if you walk into a room and two people just had an argument, and you don't know they had an argument, but you feel it mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the room. Definitely, because we're more than our physical body. We don't realize yeah. what we're carrying, what we're walking around with. 
and how that could affect other people. So definitely it's important that people know how to um, clear Mm -hmm. that clutter in their life. And I'm not even talking about physically because that's what people would think like I'm cleaning up their house, Mm -hmm. but also um, metaphysically the the clutter that's going on in your brain. Because as you know, I'm all about holism and living a holistic lifestyle. So definitely for me, setting intentions, doing affirmations, um, really thinking about what is the type of music you're listening to Mm -hmm. or whatever you're listening to. Um, what kind of food are you putting into your Yes. Body? Are you incorporating movement in your life? Because mm-hmm. I'm sure that's something that you touch on as well as part of your program. So definitely, these are things um, that we all need to look at in all areas of our life, not just one, because you can't just look at what's at the end of your fork. You have to look at everything, mind, body, mm-hmm. and spirit. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. So is that something you do too as well with the diet? Do you um, help people clear the clutter in their diet? I, I would make suggestions. I'm not a nutritionist. So what I would say is, you know, you have to figure out what works best for your body. Because again, you know, you see the latest fad diet and this is what you do. Well, it's about making lifestyle changes. Mm-hmm. You know, what's going to work? Like, for instance, I did Whole30 and I was kind of like, and eh, didn't do well on that. And we have, we're not quite in keto, but we got rid of all the sugar got rid of all the package stuff, and it's working for me. Oh, okay. Well, it's true, though, because you do have to customize things, mm-hmm. um, especially, like, in my program, and like yours, you customize things. Mm-hmm. So um, not everyone, it's not um, cookie cutter and one size or one shoe to yeah. fit all. So you really, I know with you, you really have to um, look at that person's lifestyle. Um, right. Look at also meet them where they're at yes as well (laughs) because you can't expect i can't expect the person to be like me and you can't expect the person to be like you we're all living different lifestyles so definitely you have to customize it and suit it for them yes well julie thank you so much for taking time out and coming on my show today it was a pleasure talking to you Thank you, Keisha. I really appreciate it. And if people want to learn more, they can go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com. It has a link to my podcast, Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, and they can find out all good information there. Yes, nice. And like I mentioned before, all Julie's information will be in the show notes. And if you are watching or listening to this, if you're listening to this on YouTube, definitely All her information, social media handles, her website, all of that will be in the description box below. I appreciate that. May I leave a final thought for your audience? I was about to ask you that. (laughs) See, we're we're on this. We're connecting here. We've got (laughs) it. This is what what I'd like to share. I'd like everyone listening or watching to remember this: you are good enough, you are worthy enough, and you are loved no matter what. There are going to be people in your life, it might be family, it might be friends, it might be society, it might be media, it might be social media who are going to try to tell you otherwise. No matter what, you're good enough, you're worthy, and you are loved. Yes, you are loved. Thank you, Julie, for sharing that with us. Thank you, Keisha. I appreciate being a guest, and again, thank you for all the good you're putting in the world with your podcast. I appreciate you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And everyone, thank you for listening to Just Dropping Gems podcast. Peace, blessings, and holistic health. Much abundance to you. This episode is sponsored by Dropping Gems Publishing and Dropping Gems Academy. Be sure to visit our website, www.droppinggemsacademy.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at droppinggems.com to become a sponsor or advertise on this show you can contact us at keishachristian.com or email us at info at keishachristian.com holistic health and much abundance to you